Heather, and welcome to another adventure in gardening. It's easy to see how succulents have won the hearts of gardeners everywhere. And not only that, I truly believe that succulents are kind of like that entryway plant into the houseplant hobby. Again, it's kind of given the houseplants um, the world of houseplants of revival, it really has. I mean, people are more excited about houseplants now than they were the first time macrame hangers were around, right? And I think succulents play a large part in that because they, they kind of, they've been, I mean, of course they've always been here, but they kind of like burst onto the scene and they're not just plants. And I really think that the succulents are more than just about plants. I think that they are like, uh, fun and hip and trendy and I I don't I don't even know they're more than plants they really are because people are doing things with succulents and they're collecting them so they're cute they're colorful they they can fit into anyone's decor they can fit on anyone's windowsill and they are available almost everywhere now right and they are reasonably priced so um, what's not to love about succulents. So today we're going to talk about how to make more succulents. Okay, super easy. You're probably already doing it, but stay tuned because you can always pick up good tips. And I'm also going to be using them in, um, in a craft. Now I have seen people do really cool things with succulents. I have seen ground tapestries and wreaths and um, you know wearable jewelry you know people put them in the little wine corks people put them in the little wine corks and make magnets for the refrigerator so they definitely have crossed that line of just being a house plant that stays on a shelf so when when her toy goes underneath something she barks at it until i go and get it and so, yeah, I'm gonna go get it, so I'll be right back. So, in fact, when my sister got married, I made a bouquet of just succulents for her, and it was gorgeous, just gorgeous. So I'll see if I can find a picture to share with you. Um, but I know you can find tons of pictures on Pinterest if you're interested in making one. So, um, fun fact, I am a junker. Yeah, so I, um, I love tag sales and flea markets and estate sales, and, um, and I love antiques, and, uh, and I married a man who would be really happy living in an Ikea showroom. So, uh, so we have to, you know, balance, you have to balance those things out. So when I go junking, my goal is always, okay, plant related. What can I put outside? What can I plant in? What can I, you know, containers uh, or um, uh, you know garden art I say that because I'm really weird I don't like too much garden art um, but me mostly things I can plant in so this is what and I have to and I have to hide all my things yeah so uh, anyway but so this is a piece that I've had a tea I've had this for years and uh, I, and it was planted before um, so this tea is actually from one of those old, um, you know, neon lit up signs. Um, but I, before I thought about doing this video, um, I went on Amazon and so just look up wire, uh, wire letters and, uh, and you can find a letter yourself to do, to do this project. So all I did with this is, see it. This is the original, the rusty, the rustier the better. The, um, the rusty outline here. Um, and then I um, used chicken wire. So this is really, really rusty now. And I stuffed it with long fibered sphagnum moss. It, um, it's super, super dry right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the sink to hydrate it. And um, we're gonna plant this up with some succulents. And, um, and I'm going to be st stuffing in some new moss as we go along. So I want to show you um, the succulents that I have started here and, um, and some ways that I've been propagating them. So let's flip you around. All right, one thing I, I remembered I wanted to say was I keep um, a succulent inventory. Um, 
I keep um, a little piece of each one keep, to keep it going, to make sure I don't lose that particular plant. So I keep everything on a wreath, okay, that I made. So let me show you, and you can make your own wreath too, and I'll, I'll tell you how. Okay, so this is the wreath that I have. And um, so you can get a wreath form at Michael's, and then you can um, stuff long, long fiber sphagnum moss in it, and then just use fishing line to wrap around the entire thing. And then um, what I, how I originally started this was I just took a leaf, which I'll show you. I'll show you the whole process in a moment. Oh, here, here's a leaf right there. And I set them on top, and and then the plant started to grow. Um, so he, I'm going to show you the close-ups of some of these because this is where I keep almost all the succulents, okay? Uh, and you know, I wanted to mention um, these little rosettes, these little short rosettes, the Echeverias, Sempervirums. Um, they're meant to stay short, all right? Any of these little cutesy little rosettes are meant to stay short. So if this is not one, this, this one is meant to get tall. Um, so when these get too tall, I'm going to show you how to save them in a minute, but let's take a close-up of some of these because they're super, super cute. Oh, I love this one. I love the ones with the purple. It's got a lot of green ones on here. That's a beauty, right? So last, I think it was fall, I did a garden tour, I think it was October, and I showed you some concrete planters that I had, that I had this. So every year I start succulents so that I can use them outside. I love to see them in like the strawberry pots and like mixed in with other annuals. It's just fun. And you know, the colors are so unique that, and I like to play with the colors on plants. So this color, this blue green looks great with other with other foliage but I had these planted with cana lilies and uh, it, we had had a couple frosts and the temperature was going to be really low and I almost left them all outside and I just literally pulled them out and stuck them in this tray and they have been in this tray since like October November some sometime around there so they have been waiting so my goal is to take and use up everything that I've got in waiting to um, to use it in the tea or to put in the wreath here today. So the two ways of propagating your succulent that I use is I take the leaves, the older leaves from the outside of the plant, not the new leaves on the inside, and I set them on a windowsill and just um, let them um, kind of callous and then they start to shoot out roots and then they start to make a little mini me right, right on the end. Okay, so the second way that I propagate my succulents is when these little rosettes start to get too, too tall is I just cut them and again, I let them sit on a shelf let them callus over, okay, let them seal, and then they start to send out roots. Now this one is ready to be planted and we're just gonna take, up, take off all of the dried um, little leaves there. So I'm either cutting the rosettes when they get too tall, and this happens, um, you know, inside just by them not having enough light. They can get tall like this. So these, these are all from a container that I had that just wasn't getting enough light. Now the leaves that I have, these are leaves that are, um, were in a windowsill since fall. And let me find a good one here. So the problem that I have with these is they were literally in the window and I think it was a little too cold for them. So the shriveling is normal. Okay, it's normal for them to shrivel, but um, some of them have that cold transparent look to them, but I, I think they're going to still do their thing you can see what's going on here. So I'm going to take all of these leaves and I'm gonna put them in this trough with, um, that I have soil that is slightly damp. So I'm gonna put all of these in
in here and they will root right in and when I'm ready to use them someplace else outside in the springtime all I have to do is pluck them out just like I plucked these guys out. So I see it as a benefit that my letter T here has compressed moths. See how there's a, a space here? Because it's gonna be really easy for me to do this project. And I've got a stick here for a reason. Let me get my, my moth. I'm gonna put my moth right here. So I'm gonna be able to take my succulents. I'm gonna take Succulents have um, pretty shallow root systems to them, which is good. But I'm going to be able to use my stick here. And yes, I am going to lose some leaves. That's, that's okay. We'll just make more. And I'm just going to stick it. Push it and stick it in there. This is a great one. And I'm going to use these these long stems to my advantage too because I'm just going to stick them in sideways like this. Right? And then I'm going to take the moss, hope you can see this, and then I'm just going to tuck the moth like under the chicken wire here, okay? As I go along, I'm going to fill I'm going to put my succulents in and then I'm going to just going to tuck the moss in. probably going to stop talking for a little bit so that I can speed this video up later on. Notice how I put them fairly close together. That's on purpose. I want them to grow together and cover all the moss, okay? And they will. They'll grow together perfectly. Um, this one looks a little sad, but I think it'll be okay. 
Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was, um, you know, I, I said let them callus over, whether it was a cutting or whether it was a leaf, before they go into soil or moss or before you use them, because then they won't rot. All right, you want them to callus over, and ideally, I like them to send off a root before I let them touch soil, but that's just me. You can do it however you want to do it. Uh, let's see, what else do I want to say? Oh, oh. So um, if you want to follow along and see the progress of my letter T, I'm going, to, I'm going to lay it down flat for a little while um, and let it kind of root in before I hang it anywhere. But if you want to follow along on the progress, I do a, uh, a weekend edition um, of, on my um, YouTube channel. It's called Garden Talk. So we'll, we'll look at this in a few weeks. So um, I would love it if you would subscribe so you can join me on the next adventure in gardening. Hope to see you soon.